right, hello everyone. So I'm going to walk you through the installation process to get your virtual box image of H2O's environment, the sandbox we call it, up on your laptops. So the goal is to have a Linux running inside of a window and the application that runs this is called VirtualBox. And the VirtualBox application is on a memory stick. So this memory stick is for you to keep. It's a 16 gigabyte memory stick, but it also contains software for today. So don't throw it away yet, or don't stick it in some secret corner. Just keep it up and put it in your laptops. You should have a window pop up um, here called H2O World. That's the memory sticks directory. And in there, there's a directory called VirtualBox. And again, in there, there are some different um, versions of VirtualBox depending on what operating system you have. So pick the one that's right for you. In my case, it's OS X. And install VirtualBox. So everybody should install VirtualBox on their laptops. If you already have a VM player or other virtualization software installed and you don't want to do this, please raise your hand and we'll, we'll figure out what to do in your case. But typically, you should be able to just install VirtualBox. That's not our software. That's Oracle software. And that should get you going to the next point, OK? Once we're there, we can continue. So let's make sure everybody gets that installed for now. So just install VirtualBox. Are there any questions at this point? Any corrupt memory sticks or other problems? Somebody doesn't have a memory stick yet? Please let us know. So this is the standard process, how to install an application on your computer. This has, this has nothing to do with H2O yet. It's just to get ready to install the H2O appliance inside of that application. So once VirtualBox is installed, you will have to open that program and import an appliance, a virtual appliance. And that file that is the virtual appliance is also in your memory stick. It's here. That's a four gigabyte file that contains a Linux installation with H2O in it and the data set and everything you need to go through the tutorials today that we're going to do together. Everything will be hands on. So you should be able to run H2O inside of that virtual image. Once you import an appliance, that will be one more thing that you can launch inside that application. And you just say import appliance, and you point it to the file that's on the memory stick, h 2 world, training sandbox. That's the file you want to point to. That's the four gigabyte file, and that will open up as a drive um, as a virtual hard drive, so to speak, containing a Linux installation. So you say continue. You look at all these things here. You can give it more memory or more CPUs if you have a better machine, but these are default options here. This should be fine for most people. And just say import. And now it's loading four gigabytes from the memory stick onto your hard drive into this application. That should take a few minutes. And then you'll have your CentOS installation with H2O in it. And from there, we can all have the same experience today, because that's the same operating system for everybody, the same installation, the same R version, the same R Studio, and so on. So for those that have H2O locally installed on the laptops, because they prefer to do it there, you will have to get the data sets and the markdown files that we follow, the tutorials from, from the internet somewhere, right? And we can help you there as well and point you to the right location um, where these files are. But uh, we can do that at a one-on-one -on -one basis afterwards. It's easier if you follow the uh, virtual box um, proceedings, basically, because then you're all the same, right? You don't have to have any one-offs. All right, if you have um, issues, we can resolve those. There's nothing we haven't seen yet, so let's go to this uh, VirtualBox appliance, and we just double-click on it, and that will start this Linux in a box that contains um, H2O in it. You see it's booting up. 
You have to learn how to get your mouse in and out this window. That's the one tricky thing with VirtualBox. Um, there's installation guidelines for all these things. And since I have a Mac, it tells me how to do that at some point. Let's see. First, you have to log into the CentOS, and H2O is always the right thing to type, H2O. And here we go. This is now a window inside of a window. See, oops, this is a little web browser inside of a Linux system. And you don't really need this um, tutorial text here, but it can help you today with the, with the outline of the whole presentation today. There's a up-to-date version always on online, learn.h2o.ai. We're still making updates to that, so in the next few days or weeks, that will always keep evolving and get bigger and bigger and have more tutorials and so on. But today, we're going to follow a bunch of R scripts from inside of R Studio. That will be the hands-on session that will follow this installation part. So what we need to do now is to know how to launch R Studio. And I just see here this icon having issues. See this network thing I mentioned earlier? Up here, it says the network isn't working. So what you need to do for that, oh, let me close this first. Okay, but you know, to, to, these, uh, to get this network issue resolved, you have to go to the bottom right here, get your mouse outside that window, and right click on network settings, these two blue little things, and switch from bridged to NAT. That's what I mentioned earlier. So now the network in here should be better in a few seconds. And you can use Google on whatever from inside the virtual box. All right. All right, let's close this window for now. That window was just the, um, the web browser. You can always get that back by clicking on that top left icon there. Let's now start our studio. Everything is a little small in this virtual image, um, but that's because we haven't installed additional packs to make the resolution better and so on. If you're a power user, you know how to do that, go ahead, make your experience a little better. Um, it's not easy to get this done for everybody immediately because it depends on the host operating system as well, not and the graphic card and so on. So you have to be a little patient with us when we go through this small screen here. That's the only thing that works like everywhere. So in, the, in today's tutorial, we will load um, R scripts that are also markdown files. So they look good on the web and they work in R at the same time. And these files are located inside of the H2O training folder in our home. And in there, there's a tutorials folder again. And there's basics. And my colleague Patrick will walk you through these basics in a few minutes. But I just want everybody to get to this point where you can open this MD file. And this is something you could look at with preview here. And it will actually launch a web version of this file and explains everything. So you can read this. And or you can just look at the code in our studio and follow along because it's the same text. It's everything the same. It just looks a little different. It has a couple more pound signs and so on but it's the same thing. So you can also just read it in our studio if you don't mind the pound signs being there. And later you can look at the web version. You can also look at the web version in your regular laptops, Windows, and then do the, the R Studio inside the VirtualBox. You, I'm sure you'll figure out what's the best workflow for you, but we will follow our studio's workflow in here. You can start H2O here, the green button. You just double click. That's what Amy showed you earlier. That basically launches a Java process in a terminal. When you then click on kill all, that terminal is gone. So with that, you can always make sure your workflow is clean. But you don't need to do this from inside our studio because we have a call called h2o.init that launches h2o from inside R. So this is only for those who want to play with it outside. So yeah, I could launch this here, start, and then click on the H2O GUI icon, and that will point me to localhost 54321. If that does not work for you, then you have to type 
0.0.1 as the IP address. That's the same as localhost for some machines, depending on your network settings or whatever. But this should work for you since we all changed it to NAT and we all have the same image, same virtual box. So this should be the same for everybody. In case you wonder why there's these um, these top level icons missing, it's just because they're here now. Just to make it clear, H2O itself is Java code, and when it runs, it acts as a web server, so that's why we can look at it from the browser. But you can also talk to it from R by sending text commands in JSON form, plain text, to the server. And R will then say, okay, I send it, and then it will say, let's ask for the results, and poll the server and say, hey, are you done, are you done, are you done? And the server will say, oh yeah, I'm done now. So that's how you get the progress bar in R when you run something. It's constantly talking back and forth from R to the server in plain text JSON. That's called the REST API. And that's why basically we can see the same thing from R and from the web server, uh, web browser API. It's basically the same Java code answering in, in, in HTML form or in JSON form there's even a Java version of it, as you see later. The, the, the models that are produced, you can change the URL of the model. Instead of .html, you can type .java, you can type .json, and it'll just look differently, but it's always the same server responding with the same answer, just in a different format. 